wheel rides the road. The ground underneath my boot heels burns right through my soul. Hey, who are you? Oh, wait. You're Pierce Curran. I've seen you on YouTube. You're that Scaly Adventures guy. Yeah, yeah, that's me. And I know that shirt. You're you're Steve O'Neill from Earthshine Nature Programs. That's right, and you're here at Earthshine. Oh, wow. Wow, well, you just happened to come here on the perfect day. Huh. Because for one, I'm tracking, you hear that? Yeah, something. I'm tracking box turtles right now, a box using, turtle named Jimmy Irwin. Huh, using a giant crossbow? Well, it looks kind of like a crossbow, but it's actually a radio receiving antenna. Wow. And. After we track that box turtle, I think I'm gonna go track some rattlesnakes. Whoa. Would you like to join me? Sure. <laughs> I'm well, having no luck finding anything right now, so. What are you looking for? I don't know anything. You're just herping, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only luck I've had is a black rat snake, but. Hey, that's great luck. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe something venomous will get me amped up. <laughs> uh, it might, maybe it will. I think I can probably set you up with that because I do have to catch two timber rattlesnakes today. Oh, wow. Take them out of the wild. Um, and take them to a veterinarian tomorrow, and then we're going to replace their radio transmitters, and then take them back into the wild, release them, and let them go so that we can track them again for a couple more years and learn as much as we can about the rattlesnakes their, and their life here on the mountain. Sounds like a big project. It is a big project, wow. and so tell you what, um, why don't you do the honors tracking the box turtle? Okay. I'll okay. take your hook. All right. Let's see. And um, so I'll show you how this works. That sound you're hearing is the transmission from the transmitter on the turtle Jimmy's back. Wow. Okay. And if you turn this very slow, you'll oh. start. Hear how it's getting louder? Yeah, really okay. loud. Okay. That means that you're pointing closer to his location. The louder it is, the closer he is, and, the, and you're pointing in the right direction when it's really loud. Oh, so come back this way. Oh. Yep. Hmm. Well, it seems like a little softer about right there, so I'm thinking right around there. You'd be right. All right, so what you can do is as you walk towards him, the signal's going to progressively get louder as long as you follow the loudest signal. Okay. And then when you get maybe 50 or 75 feet on up this way, we'll adjust the uh, radio a little bit and um, eventually we'll find him and we'll check him out and see how he's doing. Awesome. Great, well, lead the way. I think we're gonna have to go. We can't really climb the fence here, so why don't we, yeah, we'll go on up that way and circle around. How about that? Okay, sure. That's All right, great. lead the way. Awesome. Hard hit right there. I just don't see him. He's getting a strong hit. Yeah, just kind of dig around. Oh, wait. Gently pull those leaves back. Use your hook. Use your hook. Really gently. So go to your left a little bit and hook those briars and kind of those thorns. Really strong. Oh yeah, you found him. Or we found him. Yeah, you found him. <sighs> See, that's how tricky it can be. It was tricky. I mean, I really thought he was right there. Yeah. But then you were like, oh my gosh, you could hear that signal change. Was... That bounces right off the rock. Yeah. And then there's another yeah. rock here. Yeah. Yeah. See how it made it seem like it was down in here. Uh, made it seem like it was over there. Yeah.
Listen, listen. He's in here. Yeah. Hear him moving. Oh. So I do I. I see something move. I, I see him. I got him. He is going. No, no, you, you got. You can't really get oh, him. I see him. He's heading towards the Oops. other side. Here, I got a big old hole. Let me right see here. your hook. Here. I see him. Here you go. I'm gonna just make a little. Oh yeah, I see him. I would like Here. to get him out and weigh him. It's been a while since he's been weighed. You need me to get him? I might. I can reach through anything. might get scratched. Hey, hold on. Eh. Let me get in there first. I have a four foot iguana. I'm used to oh, it. Oh, well, true. That's all testosterone and mean. Okay, he, I'm pointing right in. Yeah, I see him. Oh, you're pretty. Yeah, this would be good footage. If I can get it. Now, yeah. these are very serious thorns, man. They're yeah. going to hurt. Oh, yeah. They're like iguana them. claws. Yeah, there we go. Good job. Good job. Uh, yeah, you found him. Yeah, or we found him. It? Yeah, y'all found him. <sighs> See, that's how tricky it can be. It was tricky. I mean, I really thought he was right there. Yeah. But then you were like, oh my gosh, and you could hear that signal change. It's it was... That rock, it bounces right off the rock. Yeah. And then there's it another it... rock here, yeah. Yeah. See how it made it seem like it was down in here? Uh-huh. Made it seem like it was over there. Yeah. The turtle's coming this way. I've got Pierce. the turtle. You're going to have to go quick, Pierce. Go, oh, okay. Turtle straight down. Oh, I see. Okay. Are you trying to get that, too? Yeah, you go for it. I got him. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready, Pierce, whenever you're dead, you're ready. We're good. We're rolling. All right, so Pierce is going in to get the turtle. And it's a really, here he goes, he's got him. Good job, Pierce. It's a really thorny bush. You got him? Yeah. Excellent. Now I'm stuck. <sighs> Literally. Hey, can somebody grab a knife and cut me out? I'm completely stuck. Say that again. I am completely and utterly stuck. I, I didn't hear you. You're mean. All right, Pierce, I'll get you. <laughs> We're all just filming. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Pierce is going in to get the turtle. And it's a really, there he goes, he's got him. Good job, Pierce. It's a really thorny bush. Got him? Yeah. Excellent. Hold on, it's got you still. First blood, right? Oh, please. I've been doing it all over. Okay, come on out. Oh, hey, big buddy. Hold on. I'm gonna... All right, Pierce, put him back in there. Right where, right where you found him, if you can, or close to it. Watch the briars. <laughs> I'll slow that video down and show it a couple times. See you later, Jimmy. Looks good. Hold on, let me, uh, oh, stay here. There you go, big man. Let me put him back. Let me catch you. Really. Where it's so Wildfire travels on a wavered wind through a field of broken dreams. Your memory flies to my restless heart on fallen angels' wings. And I wish I could have stayed. I wish I could have changed. But a rambler a random man by any other name, by any other name. Some men are made to plant their feet and stay right where they are. Some build their homes on the shipping sands beneath the shooting stars. Some bright and shining stars. So tell me about this. This is an awesome piece of equipment. Well, it is. This is the receiving antenna, and it picks up the this, this signal transmitted by the transmitter that is implanted into the rattlesnake. It sends the signal through the air, through radio waves, to the elements here. These flexible things are, are the elements of the antenna. There's a coiled spring in here that goes into the body of the antenna and then into the radio through this coaxial cable. Wow. And then the radio just interprets those signals and turns them into an audible signal that we can hear, an audible sound, that beep. Huh. And oh, then, I hear it, yeah. Yeah, that little beep there. Now the beep's telling us that she is that direction. Well, how oh, this works is it gets louder if you're pointing at her. It's a directional antenna, so okay. it means if I'm pointing in her direction, I'll pick it up louder than if I point 
somewhere else. See how it faded? Oh yeah, yeah, I see, yeah, I can hear this. Major yeah. difference. Yeah, totally. So now we can go through this incredibly thick mountain laurel thicket or we can go around it, which I like the, the around, don't you? I mean, probably a little easier. I'm either way, I mean, I'll go through a, a, a briar patch any day. I'm sure you would. <laughs> but, and I will too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I will too. But I think there's an easier way around this, so let's go around and uh, try it that route. How about that? Okay. Okay, let's do it. We'll go this way. Cool. Hey Pierce, I think we're gonna have to go off trail. Yeah, yes! <laughs> Thought you might like that, yeah. Oh yeah. And it's gonna be thick, it's gonna be precarious and treacherous, but just stay behind me, stay a little bit back so tree limbs don't smack you in the face. I'll try to keep that from happening though, but just for good measure, stay back about 10 feet. And uh, we're just gonna bushwhack until we find the snake. And watch your footing. If you have to get on your hands and knees and crawl, you know, look where you're crawling because there could be another snake, not the one we're tracking. You never know. Oh, that's a second nature to me. Excellent. Let's I think it. bushwhack should be my middle name. <laughs> oh, that works. Here's bushwhack current. <laughs> yeah, I might need to change that. <laughs> awesome. bank the same creek that she was on the side of the other day only about 40 feet farther down the stream and of course you can see our friends the canines over there still carrying on in their canine way here we go we're gonna catch her yeah okay so here we go
she is. If we put her in here. Really easy. It went very smooth, much smoother than I thought. Now let's get out of here so the dogs don't freak out anymore. Okay, so we found Utsunati, and it was a long, hard trek through an incredibly thick mess of laurels, mountain laurels and rhododendrons. And uh, so here we are, and Utsunati is right down there in front of us, probably about um, 15 feet away. If I'd stepped over these broken branches here, I would have stepped on him. But luckily my uh, receiver told me that he was very close by. So now we're going to catch him as we did with um, Zoe and take him out of the woods for his transmitter replacement surgery tomorrow morning at 8. You guys ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hope. Excellent. Here we go. Where's he at? Okay, so I'm going to... Pick up Utsunati, put him in the bucket, just like we did with Zoe, and hopefully it will go flawlessly. So let's do it. Keep him on the hook too long because it's stressful to him. No, you need to stay in there. Stay. And we got him. What are you doing right now? Uh, this, we're anesthetizing him. This is uh, obviously an anesthesia machine, and we're pumping in oxygen and a drug called isoflurane, which is a gas that uh, will induce a, a sleep-like state and then all the way into complete anesthesia. It takes a few minutes to take effect. It uh, 
is a, these are the same medications that you would have if you were in the hospital and having surgery or wow. any kind of anesthetized procedure. Uh, they go through a couple of different phases before they get into anesthesia. Sometimes they get a little bit excited before they uh, start to go into that sleepy state. So you might, so you might see them kind of start to get a little fidgety and rattling just before he goes into that deeper. Well, he is really a cool looking snake. Mm -hmm. Scales, it's so different from non-venomous. They just look painful if you were to like, <laughs> rub against them. Yeah, they yeah. look like crocodile scales almost. They're, they're pretty, uh, wow. pretty coarse looking scales, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah. They're called yeah. keeled scales. They oh, have yeah. a, a keel around the middle of the scale. Yes. Whereas a snake like a king snake has a unkeeled scale that's perfectly flat and smooth. That's why king snakes feel so silky. Oh. oh. It's a massage on your fingers. <laughs> No, don't crawl up in there. No, don't crawl up in there. Yeah, she's yeah, get sticking too much her head sticking up into the cone. That's okay. It okay. goes up all the way to here. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. That's very wild. That is wild. The transom is right in the area, so I want to be careful until it squeezes too hard. Are they as delicate as they appear? They, yeah. Okay, because they do feel like if you push on it, it would damage it. They are very fragile creatures. Yes, okay. Despite what television and the movies would have you believe. Yeah. So what did you just uh, mix up right there? That's a lubricant. This is a tube that's going to go in his throat. Oh. And, and we're going to, because we have to maintain his airway um, while we're doing this. Okay. And uh, that's going to pump this in through a very small tube that's going to go into his mouth. Mm. Yes, uh, how can you tell exactly the age? Um, I'll have Steve do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at his rattle, I can't really hold it to show you, but the part next to his body is wide. And then up near the end, it's narrower. It's, it's smaller. And so that tells me that uh, this rattle that he has is the rattle he's had almost his entire life. Um, yeah, he has lost the button on the end. When a rattlesnake is born, it's born with a tiny little button that does not rattle. It does not make a sound. Hmm. And it's very small because the snake is only, you know, about this long. Wow. Okay, so his button is, it's, yeah, he's little when he's born. And the little button is very tiny. And then as he grows, every time he sheds his skin, he will add a new segment to his rattle, a new one of these segments. Wow. And so since a rattlesnake can shed his skin maybe, you know, four or five, six times a year, depending on how healthy he is, how much food he's getting, then you can't tell how old they are by counting the segments. But you can tell that, okay, it's wide here and it's narrow here. So he's not a very old snake because if he, say if he sheds four times a year, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. That's, That's three years. Three years, okay. <clears throat> well, I know that I've been tracking him for two years, and when I got him, he wasn't much smaller than this. So I think he's older than that. Um, he, in other words, he lost some of his rattle buttons. Oh, they from broke off. predators. Or they got snagged in between cracks in a rock or something like that, and uh, broke off because they're brittle. They're made out of the same material that your fingernails and hair is made out of, keratin. Oh. So I'm guessing though, since I've read that <clears throat> juveniles, uh, juvenile venomous snakes are with the parents' deadly venom, so if they too have venom, then they must be, um, they, they're, since they don't have a rattle, they must be even more dangerous. Mm, not necessarily. They do have the same venom. It's just that they have less of a control over that, of, of how much they inject. Oh, okay, um, yes. They're so they, immature and they'll inject right. it all. Exactly. They'll inject pretty much all of it. And okay. when they get older, they learn how to control it better and can inject some, all, or not at all. That's, That's where the term dry bite comes from. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, do these uh, snakes have hemipenes like the mm -hmm. um, like uh, boas and pythons do? They the do. little uh, spikes that come out? Mm -hmm. They do. Wow. Okay. Maybe we can see that later, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's getting there. Yep. And he's out. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, um, I know with box turtles, the antenna sticks out. Why don't you, um, why doesn't the antenna stick out with these uh, The antenna would get caught, potentially wrapped around things, and uh, it's a, a long, because, you know, with, with box turtles you have shells and stuff to them. Uh, box turtles, you have shells that you can anchor, you know, and so forth. But these guys, flexible and so forth, they're getting into all sorts of little nooks and crannies and leaving a long trailing okay. um, antenna is not going to be. You don't want them ripping it out and so forth like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So now we're going to make a cut. So I have a question for you. Since mm -hmm. you um, you see uh. When you're tracking them, is it easier to find the turtles than the snakes because the antenna is sticking out? Yes, the turtles have a uh, longer range. Okay.
release Zoe back into her native habitat. I've had her for a little over a week and it's about time she gets back into the wild. I'm whispering because I'm getting close to where the dogs live. The dogs that uh, bark every time I get near them when dealing with Zoe. So I have to be quiet. I hope they don't hear me since dogs have such an incredible sense of hearing. Luckily it's still, so there's no breeze. Or my scent could be blowing in their direction and then they would bark long before I got in their area. They would know I was here. So hopefully everything will go smoothly and I'll get Zoe released without any difficulties and then get on to Utsunati and get him released as well. So let's do it. silent suddenly so that tells me somebody must have walked down and gave them their food and so now they're happily eating where I want to release Zoe is straight ahead oh, right there at the edge of the forest and you can see the light coming through the trees from the field where the dogs are I'm going to try to walk up, release her, and then come back. One of the dogs is loose. I'm going to have to release her higher up on the ridge. I think he's following me. I guess he thinks he did his job. 
chased off the intruder. I'm more worried about his hooters. That's why I'm getting out of here. I think he understands that language. Maybe not, just barely. <laughs> well, I want to let Zoe go somewhere in this area, but as you can see, there's danger for her and for me. So I'm gonna let her go. Find a good place. Oh, here we go. There's some rocks right over here. There may be some cavities under the rocks. She could hide in there until night falls, and then she can make her way down to where she needs to go to be on the right track. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so the rock was not as good as I thought. So I found an old rotting log with a cavity underneath. I'm gonna let Zoe go here. And she should be able to find her way back to where I captured her a week and a half ago, about 100 yards down the hill, very close to the dogs. Hopefully she'll decide to move on up the ridge towards the waterfall. We can only hope. So here we go. She's not happy. So, as you can hear, she's beside the camera. She's coiled up four inches to the left of the camera. I'm going to attempt to hook the camera and bring it towards me now. So take a look at Zoe. Okay, so there she is. She knows where she is. She's a little ill. I can't blame her. After all she's been through, she deserves to be a little upset. She's actually quite terrified right now. All right, so I'm going to leave her alone and I'm going to get out of here. I don't want to be around here any longer than necessary. And I'll be back in a week to check on Zoe's location, and I really hope she's nowhere near these dogs. It's a little bit too dangerous for both of us. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's Zoe, still rattling. And I'm 50 feet up the hill from her. She is very upset. 
of course I had to, when I had to run from the dog, I kind of jostled her container around a little bit. Couldn't help it, he was after me. So it shook her up a little. Especially after riding halfway across the county in a car in a plastic bucket. I don't blame her for being totally wigged out. But 50 feet, that's pretty a pretty good distance to be able to hear a rattlesnake. She wants you to know that she's there. And she does not want to be stepped on. She's slowing down a little. Still rattling, but slower now. I hope for that dog's sake, he does not come up here sniffing around following my trail. She just stopped rattling. But as touchy as she is, if the dog does come up, he'll just have to walk 30, 40 feet away from her and she'll feel his, the vibrations from his footfalls and she'll start rattling. But I have a feeling now she's going to try to find a hole, crawl in, and sleep for a couple of days to get over the trauma of the last week and a half. I just wish she could understand that it's in her best interest. It helps us learn as much as we can about these beautiful snakes in order to protect them. I just wish there was another way to do it. Well, I better get off this mountain and get Utsunati back to his home before it gets dark. See you later, Zoe. Good luck. You're going to need it. Oh boy, now that was something else. That was one of the most scary uh, rattlesnake tracking days I've had so far. I wasn't quite sure what that dog was going to do. I saw him first. He was trailing me. I saw him following my scent. And then I circled around and uh, grabbed the camera and he came after me. That's when I had to tear up the hill. And um, it was crazy. I'm glad he wasn't a mean dog. I think he was just being protective of his, of his territory. And, you know, he could have come at me and latched onto my leg. I don't even have a first aid kit. I think I'm gonna have to start carrying one and maybe some pepper spray. I'm not worried about the snakes. I'm worried about the dogs, the mosquitoes, the people. They're far more dangerous than rattlesnakes. I hear voices over there near the dogs now. Boy, I got in and got out just in time, didn't I? Good thing that dog can't talk. Well, I really hope I don't have to come back to this spot ever again. I really hope that Zoe moves on. Let's head on down the mountain and release Utsunati back in his native habitat. It was quiet day on the side of the county, but there's moon out tonight that rubs me on till the break. Oh, what a wonderful sight Well, all the boys are getting tight in the woods And the gals are kicking up their heels I can hear all around that bluegrass sound Rolling across the field, rolling across the field Three feet that way. All right, let's find it, and then we can get it snotty back in the wild. Wow, that's a very big 
pine tree. Very big. Look at this. That's really something, isn't it? Probably over 150 years old. Let's keep going. More spider webs. Lost satellite reception, but I know that I'm really close. It's about 30 feet up the hill here. So, we put away the GPS and get Usanati back in the wild before the rains come. I'm hearing thunder off in the distance. The wind's picking up, it's getting dark, and that usually means thunderstorm. So, let's get Utsunati released. Uh. All right, here we go. Captured him just up the hill, but I like the looks of this log right here. It'll offer him some really nice shelter. Um, and since night's falling, a storm's coming, he'll need some shelter to gather his, uh, gather his wits about him before he heads on following his normal routine. So let's let him go and get back up this mountain before the storm hits. All right, here we go. All right, the rain.
summertime and the living is easy. Yeah, the catfish are jumping. That old cotton is high. Yo, pappy's rich and your mammy's. Hush, little baby, honey, don't you cry. So that was a very successful timber rattlesnake release. We dropped Zoe back in the forest and we released Utsunati. Got a little wet. <laughs> I would like to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who's made this possible, who's made Earthshine Nature programs possible over the last five years. Without you, this would never have happened. Without you, we would not know all that we know about the natural movements of the eastern box turtle and the timber rattlesnake. Without you, we would not have saved the lives of countless box turtles through rehabilitation. This is just an incredible project, and I feel honored to be able to participate in this and to make this happen. Actually, I didn't make it happen. You made it happen. So thank you. Thank you all for working so hard to keep me working so hard out here in the forest and in the fields, protecting these animals, learning as much as we can about these wonderful reptiles that so many people love to hate and misunderstand. So hopefully through my videos, you can see that they're not anything to worry about. They're an animal to marvel at, and a beautiful creature, animals that need protection. So please, next time you see a turtle crossing the road, help him across the road, to the side of the road that he's going towards. Next time you see a snake, let it live, because it's helping you, helping you by keeping nature in a balance. So. Thank you all. I would also like to say thank you to the Curran family of Scaly Adventures. Pierce Curran, Tanya Curran, and Rick Curran all came up a week or so ago to help me go out into the forest and capture these snakes for this transmitter implantation surgery and then get them back out in the wild so that we can continue tracking them. Thank you, Scaly Adventures. If you're interested in, in Scaly Adventures and what they do, please check out the link that's here on the page. Take a look at this link. And, or that link, or that link. I'll have several links on my page. Check them out, because they're really amazing people and they're doing great work to help conserve our beautiful wildlife. So until next time, and have a great time in the forest. And get outside, you need to. It's beautiful out here. <laughs> and it's raining really hard right now. All right, that's all folks. See you next time.
Say that again. I am completely and utterly stuck. I, I didn't hear you. You're mean. All right, Pierce, I'll get you. Huh, my snake hook is hung on a bush. 